Hi folks, uh, I'm in the studio room right now where, well, basically this cluttered desk has lots of stuff for uh, guitar stuff and whatnot, but this video, kind of weird, the lighting is wacky, this video is basically on these graphene foams. Now, this is the same exact foam. This is without, and that's with graphene, and... This is strong, and when I say strong, I can't really show you guys, but you cannot bend this with two hands. You cannot. Uh, you can't break it with your bare hands. Um, obviously, it's fairly thick, but it reminds you of a more like a solid ABS panel than than a foam. Uh, you can't crush it. I mean, you could crush it, but it's just not flexible. It's very, very, very hard. It's very tough. You can stab it with a knife and nothing happens. I mean, it. the, the reason why this top is like that is because it forms a little skin. And then, same thing, this is where it was sitting when it was made. So, it was made just like this. Uh, and same thing here. This has a, a little skin sheen on it. This is the same material, but, like, you could easily, I mean, you can see... You can easily bend that. This, <laughs> I, I could do this with a wrench and a vise, much like the other graphene plastics, and nothing will happen. I mean, this is no joke. This is very, very, very strong. Strong enough where I'm willing to bet that if you made, like, airplane wings uh, out of graphene foam, uh, they would be very stiff. You would not have to have any kind of reinforcement. You know how they do current. They do, um, uh, it's uh, may, uh, already, or ready to fly. Uh, they used to call them ARFs, uh, uh, or assembled ready to fly, or whatever, uh, model airplanes, or nowadays they call them drones. But uh, nowadays they make a lot of these out of like a foam. Well, this stuff is very light. It's It's the same, you know, same kind of density, uh, weight-wise, you know, if, if you, if, well, it is the same density, so that would be weight, uh, <laughs> anyway, science 101, ah, learn it, um, but this is so much tougher than this, you know, this is, this, I mean, you can hear the, I mean, it sounds like it's, it's different, but what it is, there's just no give here, this is hard, hard, hard material, um, and when I say it's like ABS, I'm not joking. Like, this is a void right here, right here where my thumb is. And if you push on it, you, I mean, it is just like the outside casing of a PlayStation controller or just anything made out of ABS. I mean, it, it, it's like an ABS foam. That's what it feels like. It feels like, you know, really, really hard, hard plastic. And yet it is very, very light. Um, I would say that this weighs, well, I mean, this is, the, they do weigh a little different. I think, I, actually, honestly, I think the density is a little higher than uh, on this, just because of how it was made. Um, but this weighs almost the same amount as this, uh, you know, within a gram. Um, I would say that they, they weigh about five grams, maybe 10 grams. These do. Um, like this probably weighs like 10 grams and this weighs like maybe 11 or 12. I mean, so that, that gives you an idea of, you know, there is a little difference, but not much. I mean, it's very, very, very strong. This stuff is extremely strong. Um, anyway, the video is rambling on and I'm, I'm being an idiot by, uh, talking too much. Point is, is that's what we're working on that, some batteries, some other things, uh, um, going to do some testing for some, some folks, uh, because we have access to do it. That, that's another thing. Um, there's a lot of people that are asking questions about how to make graphene. Um, and, and quite honestly, sadly, if you go to my video to graphene or not to graphene, I think it is, uh, that will explain a lot of that. Um, that most methods are not producing single layer uh, 
materials. Even CBD has a tendency to pool. Uh, there, there's a whole, there's a bunch of articles on that where you're getting two and three layer actually at a CBD. Uh, some of the higher quality or or more strenuous lab based uh, production methods are making single layer, but when when you're making single layer like ours, uh, it's very very hard to do. Not I'm not I'm not trying to be a jerk and say oh you can't make single layer, but it, it's very difficult and it's very it also it's very difficult to prove uh, that if if you're not using an AFM. If you don't have access to one of those, you 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 have no way to prove it. Uh, Raman Spectra. If you're using little flakes, the a lot of times if the flake is say one nanometer, and you have a, I mean not one nanometer, one um, micron in diameter. Let's just say a one micron flake in diameter, and you have a laser beam that's 480 nanometers uh, in in wavelength. It's going to be hard to focus that in on the individual flake. And it's also really hard if, in a situation where a flake lays on top of another one, then then you have a, the, your D-band goes through the roof and it shows two layer. So, it's really, really, really hard to uh, use a Raman to, to do that. Uh, it, it'll get you there, it'll get you near there, like you know you're, you're getting close. But uh, to prove it 100%, you have to use an AFM. That's that's just a fact. I'm sorry. Uh, there's No one can argue with me on that. I mean, it's just scientific fact. Uh, and then and then you'll have to do some other you know, DLC and different tests to even confirm on that. So it, you can't just use an AFM, but AFM is the most definitive uh, mark where you can actually see the individual particles and and you can actually see the individual thickness of each individual particle Or at least you'll get a large range inside of what you're using anyway, but enough of that uh, I'll I'm gonna do some tests for some folks. Uh, they're sending me some stuff, and then I'm ex I'll explain to them what they've got uh, Because we have access to this stuff. That's that's kind of the neat part that this part of the sharing is caring thing that we're trying to do here uh, at Celtic is, you know, help other people out. Because if someone else figures out some magic way to make graphene or get a near particle or get something close or something useful or they, they see the needle move and they're like, wow, this seems to work really good, better than anything else. Uh, at least then they will know exactly what to, uh, they're dealing with. Now, I can only do this for so many things, because like an AFM, just the needle, each time you measure, you use the AFM uh, for each sample, basically. Uh, I mean, n not not guaranteed, but this can happen. It's about $60 per needle. Uh, the needle, the little measuring device that goes across and scans, uh, it's like $60 per sample, basically. Uh, unless unless they don't break it, and if your technician is good, um, then they won't break it, absolutely. But sometimes it can happen, you know. It, it's up and down, up and down. And those who are out there that are really good at the AFM will argue with me and say, "Oh, I can do, you know, I can I can run it for three or four hours." That's why you're good at it. <laughs> you know, some I mean, just think of it as like the absolute worst case scenario. It could be. Uh, very costly, but we'll still do it. We'll still try to do it for people. Um, and then, and then we have access to the, uh, MDF, which will do battery testing for certain folks. Uh, and there's all kinds of, there's a whole list of things that we're working on to verify some people's projects, uh, and, as well as our own, because we, we've done this so far in our own, might as well do it for some other folks, uh, just because that's it's the right thing to do. It it helps. Anyway, so there you go, folks. Um, gosh, I can't believe that I rambled on for nine minutes. So thanks a lot, and uh, have a good day.